Hello boys and girls, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to talk about nothing. So this is not going to be a philosophical video. I'm going to talk about the nothing type in Scala, why it is useful, and where it might be used. This video will assume that you're an essential Scala programmer, meaning that you know some basic Scala and you know some essential inheritance. As with the other Rock the JVM videos, I will recommend that you code alongside me, or at least try the examples yourself and see them in action. And whenever you need to refer back to the nothing type in Scala, just refer back to this video. This video is also available in written form over at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. Now, I've seen some confusion about the nothing type in Scala, and I wanted to shed some light on it in this video. So if you're a Scala programmer, you might have seen the nothing type once or twice, and you have at least the broad picture of Scala's type hierarchy, which looks something like this. So the root type in Scala is Scala.any, which has two major hierarchies underneath it. One is Scala.anyval, which has all the value types, including int, boolean, float, and so on and so forth. And on the right, we have scala.anyref, which is equivalent to Java long object. So this is the parent of all the reference types, including strings, lists, sets, persons, and every single type that we define ourselves. So if I get back to the code in my code editor, and I write something like class my precious. If I define a class like this, implicitly, I define class my precious extends any ref. So extends any ref is implied by the compiler, meaning my precious is a reference type. So whenever you're not extending a type yourself, you're actually extending any ref. You can also extend any val if you want, but that's a very, very special case. I'm probably going to talk about that in another video. Now, here's the situation that I actually want to talk about, which is nothing. So, if I write something like def, I define a method called, let's say, give me a number. So, give me number, which needs to return an int. And um, if you have some arguments over here and some arguments don't pass some conditions, you might want to throw an exception, for example, if you want to make this method really, really strict. So I can do throw new no such element exception. Now, what is this expression going to return? I say that it returns int, but this expression doesn't actually return anything at all. It doesn't return an integer. In fact, it doesn't return anything at all. And uh, this type, the type of this expression is applicable for both int and, for example, if I write a method, let's call this give me string, which should return a string, I can also throw new no such element exception. So this expression over here is applicable for a return type int and for a return type string. So the throw, the throw expression doesn't return a string either. It doesn't return anything. It has no value. However, it's an intuitive good replacement for both int and string and any other type you might conceive. So let's call this, let's call another method def give me precious which should return a my precious, and I can also use that. So throw new no such element exception. So this expression over here returns a type or has a type that is applicable for both int, string, and whatever other type I might want to define, whatever that is. So the lesson over here is that the throw expression return a type called nothing. So the type nothing is a type that does not and cannot have any instances. Not only that, but nothing doesn't have any values at all. So nothing is not, let me write this down. So nothing is not unit, is not null, is not anything at all. It's the type of nothingness, if you will. So I'm going to write this because this is how I think about nothing. So nothing is the type of nothingness. So this is getting pre pretty uh, philosophical. Aside from crashing your program, which is a side effect, the throw expressions will return nothing and they can be used as a replacement for any return type. So this is pretty powerful. In a pretty ironic fashion, nothing can actually replace anything. So the type is called nothing, but it can replace any other type.
In other words, nothing is a valid subtype for all types. So you say you're returning a type, but you're returning a more specialized type on the right-hand side from a, an object-oriented perspective. This is why nothing sits at the bottom of Scala's type hierarchy, so right at the bottom over here. So nothing basically extends any type. Now, notice that in this picture, we also have the null type over here on the right-hand side below the anyref hierarchy. So null has the same purpose as nothing just for reference types. So if in the code I say def give me precious2, which is of type my precious, I can say it returns null, meaning the value null is of type null with a capital N, which is a subtype of my precious. I can also say that give me precious2 returns the type null with a capital N. So null is treated specially uh, by the compiler, much like nothing. And I will talk about how the compiler treats the types null and nothing in a second. So nothing sits at the bottom of the type hierarchy and null sits at the bottom of the any ref hierarchy. So I hope this makes sense. All right, now let me back, get back to the code. Now, the some questions that we might want to ask. Now, because Nothing, this type, has no possible values. It cannot be instantiated and it has no values. Having no possible values, can you actually use the nothing type at all? Well, you can. For example, if you define a function about nothing, you can uh, make this function pass an argument, let's call this a, which is of type nothing. So you can use the nothing type as an argument, and uh, let's say it returns an int, which is, for example, 45. So this function is valid in the, by the Scala compiler. You can define an argument of any type, including nothing, regardless of whether you can actually use this function at all. You need to uh, use this function with an argument of type nothing. So you would call the method a function about nothing, and then you would need to pass an expression of type nothing. And uh, we know from before that the only expressions that can return nothing is throwing an exception. So throw new null pointer exception. So this is valid from the compiler's perspective, but when you actually start to run this, this will actually crash because the argument needs to be evaluated first. So if I try to run this, if I make this object extend app, then uh, if I try to run this, then my program will crash with this null pointer exception because the uh, argument needs to be evaluated before the function gets called, which is being shown here in my console. So you could use the nothing type directly, but it's not really useful if you want to actually pass values of type nothing because they're not useful them themselves, right? So can you define functions returning nothing? Let's call a function returning nothing, which returns nothing. Well, you can by returning an expression of type nothing, which of course is just a throw exception. So throw new runtime exception, for example. So this is also uh, compiler friendly, that is the code compiles. So if I recompile this fine, the, com uh, the compiler doesn't yell at me. Now, nothing is actually pretty useful in generics and especially in covariant generics. Let me give an example with a collection. So let's define a, let's call this an abstract class. Let's call this my list of the covariant type plus T, meaning that if you have animals, cats, and dogs, lists of dogs are also lists of animals. So the subtype relationship transfers from the generic type to the wrapper type. So um, in uh, comments here, if dog extends animal, then list of dog extends list of animal, meaning the subtype relationship between a list of dog and a list of animal. Well, in this case, if you define a covariant container like this, if you define a class, let's call this non-empty list of type plus T, with a head of type t and a tail of type my list t 
This is kind of like a node, a linked list node. This is a non-empty list definition, which is pretty awesome because it's also generic like it's my list parent. But for the empty list, we can define an object called empty. Let's call this empty list, which extends my list of nothing. So when you have a covariant container like this, nothing is very useful because you can make all the empty lists equal because they don't contain anything. They are typed with my list nothing, meaning that there is no instance of my list with a certain type. So all the empty lists are equal regardless of whether you're using my list of string, my list of int, or my list of anything at all. Let me give an example. Let me define a val, let's call this list of strings, defined as my list of string. So I'm defining a my list string on the left hand side, and on the right hand side I can write a more specialized or a more concrete implementation of a my list string. So I can choose between a non empty list or an empty list. So I can say empty list because empty list being a my list nothing is also a my list string. So an empty list is also a my list string. In the same fashion, I can say val list of integers of type my list int is also empty list. So I can use this empty list as a replacement for any type on the left hand side, a list of strings, a list of integers, a list of preciouses, or uh, whatever the plural of precious is. So list, let's call this precious list. So the grammar Nazis um, don't kill me. So my list of my precious my precious proper spelling Daniel I can use the empty list as a valid replacement for this as well so in much the same way as a nothing expression is a valid substitute for any type so is the empty list a proper substitute for a list of any type so the nothing type is very useful in covariant generics for this reason and the list example is one of the simplest examples that we can use for the nothing type all right, now let me talk about something else at the very end of this video, which is the stressful uh, question marks. So uh, if you define a some unimplemented method with some arguments, whatever, and you say that this some implement unimplemented method returns a string, for example, you can use any type you like. And uh, just to leave this as a stub, you can pass in question mark, question mark, question mark. So this expression over here, you've probably seen this in the Scala code before. The question marks is just a definition which returns nothing. So this is a method with no arguments and no parentheses that returns nothing and just throws this not implemented error. So this is a popular implementation for stubbed methods. And uh, if you try to call these methods, you will see this not implemented error. If you thought this was a compiler thing, it wasn't. It's just an implementation with throwing an exception. So I hope I've shed some light on it as well. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now I'm dying for feedback so please leave yours in the comments and if you like this video go ahead and subscribe because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>